YouTube, welcome back to the shop and another Blaze to Be video. Got a fairly short video going on today, I think. Shouldn't take too long to go through this customer project and get it knocked out. Focus today is going to be on how do you hold odd shaped things in the lathe chuck when you need to turn them. So in the case of these wheel studs, we need to shorten them by a quarter of an inch. They're too short. I can't grab those in a three jaw chuck. Uh, also, I can't grab those in a collet. They're not long enough to stick out the back because this knurled end and the head are getting in the way. So anything I would typically do to hold those, I can't. So we're gonna put a hole in a chunk of stock right here and we're gonna split that and then we're gonna basically make a little collet of sorts to be able to hold those in the lathe. So that's the project for today. We're gonna jump into that here in a minute. As always, appreciate all the comments you're putting on the channels, appreciate the video ideas that are coming through. And if you like the channel, if you wanna see more videos on machining, lathe work, milling machine work, please hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you'll know when the next video is coming out. Right now, the goal is we're putting them out every Saturday morning at seven o'clock. You can get up on Saturday morning, have your cup of coffee as you're headed out to your shop to do your own projects. You can take a look at what's going on in the Blades to Be shop the week before that. So let's go ahead and jump into this project. We're gonna get this chunk set up in the lathe, put a hole in the middle of it, and we'll get it split, and then we'll start working on shortening these wheel studs by a quarter of an inch. Let's go. So just some one and a quarter inch hex stock that I've got here. That's what we're gonna to use to machine this. Nice and easy to hold in our three jaw chuck. So we'll put a hole in this, and I think that should work pretty well. First we'll face off both ends, make sure we have that nice and cleaned up. All right, this is aluminum, so we're gonna be going at full speed. I've got it on a uh, seventh hour per revolution for feed. Go ahead and turn it around and we'll clean it up on the other side as well. Our part is 543 in diameter. So I'm gonna have to drill that out half inch, and then I'm gonna have to run a boring bar through there to get that out to 543. Yeah, 543 is what we're getting all the way around. So let's punch it out half inch, and then we will bore it out the rest of the way. Slow that down a little bit. We'll go down to 620 for drilling that. Move this out just a little bit. Be able to get all the way through there. All right, let's get in there and we can see what's going on with boring that out. So we drilled it out half an inch. Gonna go in there, touch off. We're gonna take 20 thou to start with because we have 43 that we're trying to take out of there. So we'll take a 20 thou cut and then we will come back and take probably another 10 and then another 10 thou cut after that to finish it up. Let's get that roughed out and then we'll measure. We'll speed this back up again. Measure, see what we've got there. And we're right at about 524 on our way to 543. So we've got about 19 thou more to go out of there. So let's take 10 to start. See what that leaves us with. So it took about 10 and a half. So that's right at 35. And we're going to 43, so that's eight more thou. We do not want a tight fit on these. So we're gonna go ahead and take nine, make sure we have a thou clearance. 
Obviously, if we needed to minimize run out, had a more precision part, we'd be doing something different. But we're gonna put a thou clearance. We're gonna split this. It's gonna clamp back down on our part. We know we may have a couple thou run out when we put each of those back in, but all we're doing is shortening the wheel lug. We're not re-threading it. We're not doing anything like that. So a couple thou run out on the end of those wheel studs is gonna be fine for what we need. Our biggest goal is we don't want that to be tight. We wanna be able to take this collar on and off multiple times. So we'll go for a little bit over. So we're gonna go ahead and take nine thou out of where we are right there. So that's reading about a half thou clearance is all. Let's see what kind of fit that gives us on our part. Yeah, that's fitting about like a half thou clearance too. So we should have taken a little more. We are gonna take a skim out of there again. We do not want those that tight. We don't want to get these stuck on and off. So we need a little more clearance than that. So I was at nine. I'm gonna pull this back out to just about nine and a half because we had a little bit of flex on there as well. So if I just take that same cut again, it should pull a little bit. So I'm just setting it for an extra half thou and then the flex that was in that bar. That's gonna be a nicer fit for us. Perfect. Just out of curiosity, let's see what that took for a cut when we set it for Half thou more on the dial, but the flex that was in the bar, see how much more that actually gave us. So that actually gave us a full two thou more on a cut. So there was a one and a half thou flex in there. Good to know. All right, let's get this over to the bench. We'll get that split with the hacksaw and get the rough edges cleaned off of that so we're not grabbing onto sharp edges while we're using this tool for today. And then we'll come back and we'll start shortening some studs. Let's just nick those edges off on the grinder. That's gonna make that a little more comfortable to work with. And there we have it. Now we have a nice little jig, be able to put our studs in there, drop those in the lathe, and we'll be able to hold, hold those without that head getting in the way. Knock a quarter of an inch off of these, and we'll be done. Quick little project. Let's head back over to the lathe and get these shortened up. Let's give the first one of these a try. Now, if I measure these first ones, I've got it up to the shoulder at the back, and I've got it flush with the jaws at the front, so I should be able to set my DRO off of this first one and then make all the other ones the same without having to remeasure every time and be able to just jump in here. Let's see how that works for us. Slow this back down. Assuming these are fairly tough stuff. Yeah, definitely tough stuff. I think I might even make sure I'm not pushing that out of there. No, I'm still on with my zero. Let's use my offsets here to get some consistency on these. All right, so there's my 250 offset. So we're gonna zero that right there. So for all my other ones, I'm gonna go into zero. And for this bevel on here, all right, so I went in 525 and then I turned into 60 thou to give that nice big bevel on there. I think even that, we can get rid of that sharp edge off the end of that. All right, let's write some of that down so we can get that repeated for all these other ones. 
So cut down to zero on the Z. Big bevel is going to be 525 on the Z and 60 on X. Small bevel is going to be 300, 300 on X. And we went over to 520 on Z. So there's what we're looking at. There's our quick formula, knock that out. Let's go measure one, make sure that we are a quarter of an inch shorter, and then we will knock out the other nine. Should be quick enough. Confirmed, we are a quarter of an inch shorter. So let's repeat. All right, I am gonna spin this insert once though. And now that we've got this slowed down, we'll leave it slow. I think that insert will last a little longer. Now go over to 525. And I'm going to turn in until I get to 60. There, kept the feet on a little bit, no chatter problems. And this one I want to feed into 300, and I'm coming over to 520. And there we go. Two down. All right, so I didn't use the fish, I didn't use the square to put the first one in, and it was off by seven thou compared to the first one, so that second one was seven thou shorter. Let me just double check that. Yeah, it's about seven thou difference. So we're gonna get in here to our zero, and we are gonna back that off by that seven thou, re-zero it, and then our formula should work out for the rest of them. There, by moving at that eight thou, made that little bevel on the end back in the right spot, so I know we've got closer to the right length on this one, or back to the same length. That is a good, uh, we've got a good formula over there. Look for another video coming out soon. This is the second project in a row where really talking about tool offset and basically coming up with notes for that repeatability of a project using your DRO and that tool offset, changing tools out. So I think I'm gonna do a full video on that. So look for that coming out in a couple weeks. But let's quit talking, let's knock out the rest of this project and call it done. Hey, one other thing I noticed on the uh, the one before this one is it matters which way I put it in my jig since I just put a bevel on there with a bevel tool and that's going to hold it a little different. So I made sure I marked it that time out to make sure that I'm putting them in there consistently every time.
All right, we've been watching lots of chips go on this project so far. This is our last one. I thought I'd zoom out and let's just talk a little bit about what's going on with our whole formula here as we're, we're doing this. So I'm just following my notes here on each one of these and we'll just talk through that a little bit on this last one. So on the first one, I'm cutting the Z axis. I'm gonna move over, cut that down to zero. I'm taking 250 thou, I'm doing 50 thou cuts. You've probably seen that it's five cuts every time. And then I take that tool off, I slow it down one speed. For the big bevel, I'm gonna move my Z-axis over to 525, and I'm gonna turn in to 60 thou on there. Now to get rid of, to make sure I don't have the chatter problem we had on the very first one, I wanna be a little aggressive on that feed. I probably blow past a little bit. I probably hit 61, 61 and a half, just cause I'm pushing, make sure I don't have chatter, pull it back out. And then on the small bevel, I'm going to set my x-axis at 300 thou in on the diameter, and I'm going to move z over to 520 thou. And again, I've actually been finding about 523, 524 looks a little better on that bevel. So that's what I've been going to is 523, 524. So that's what I call my formula. Using my DRO, that's my DRO tool offset quick change formula to make this part. So I haven't measured anything after we completed the first one. So let's take a zoom out look at what's going on with each of those pieces. So first, make sure our part is in our jig the correct direction. We'll get that clamped in. Just snug in there. Make sure we don't have a lot of play and then I'll use my fish to just push that in and get it square. Get it tight and then I want to make sure I get that nice and snug since we're holding that in there. Chuck key away. I'm going to put on my first tool. I'm going to come over. I don't have to worry about what's on the, the x-axis right now. We're going to feed over on the x-axis. But I'm looking over here, and I'm going to go to 200 thou for my first cut, and that will be 50. So I'm moving my z-axis into 200. I should have my speed in the right place. And we're going to feed over, and I'm going to take my five cuts now, 50 thou a piece, moving on my DRO 50 each time. So right now I'm at 200, 150, 150, down to zero for that last cut, and then we'll have this step done. All right, so that step is done. On the DRO, if, I'm hoping that's in focus enough. You can see the numbers there on the camera while we're zoomed out this far. Uh, some of the cuts in between, as long as I was within a thou, that was close enough. Really, that last cut is the only one that matters to make sure that we're going to the same spot. Now I'm going to change my tool out. So I'm going to put on my tool for the big bevel. And I'm going to slow down one speed. I'm going to move this over. So now I'm winding over on my z-axis. I'm going to set that to 525. So I've got that set to 525 and I'm going to turn my x-axis in. I'm just going to feed it by hand and I'm going to turn in until I get to 60 thou on this top. So it's going to count down to zero first and then I'm going to go past zero, go to 60 thou. And I'll be pushing in there with a little bit of feed to make sure we don't get chatter. Probably go a thou or so past that. Then we will pull out and stop and change to our next tool. is done. Now I'm going to put on my tool for a small bevel, change my speed back up again, and now for this one I'm going to set my x-axis to 300 thou. So I'm going to set that to 300 and then I'm going to feed over. So now I've got my x-axis set at 300 thou. That one's going to be set and I'm going to move the z-axis and I'm going to feed that over to 523, 524-ish and then we will be done. And that's it. There we used our DRO, our quick change tool post. We had three different tools that we used for this setup and three different sets of numbers we were going to on our DRO to get that repeatability across 10 different parts that we just machined, not measuring anything in between, using this cool jig that we just made.
Well, there's a quick look at the consistency across those 10 parts right there. We made a quick jig to hold our workpiece. We used our quick change tool post. We used our DRO for that repeatability and knocked out those 10 fairly quickly and very consistently. I would say much more consistent than we even needed to for wheel studs. I think length within 10, 15, 20 thou even probably would have been close enough. So I think our precision on those far exceeds what is needed for that part, but great practice. That's what we're out here for. So this time learning how to use the DRO, learning how to kind of write up a formula for a part when it isn't critically important, great time to learn. So great experience for me. I haven't had a DRO on a lathe before, so I'm trying to get more and more efficient with using my DRO and being more consistent doing things like this. Well, YouTube, that's a wrap. That's another video done. I said this was going to be a fairly quick one, but hopefully some good learning in there as we made a jig, a holding some odd shaped things in the lathe, some things that don't just fit in your chuck jaws, and really spending some time with the DRO, the quick change tool post and working on that. Look for another video. This is again, the second video in a row where we spent some time talking about quick change tooling and tool offsets. So I think that warrants a full video where we're really gonna spend some time talking about how to write up that formula and really how to maximize your DRO, how to make sure you're getting the most out of it. So I think I'll do a full video on that. Look for that in a week or two coming out. But until then, if you like the channel, you want to see more videos, hit that subscribe button. Appreciate the comments that are coming through. Consistently getting videos out every Saturday morning. This Saturday, look for part two of the Dividing Head video series. That's going to wrap that one up. While you're waiting on my next video, I hope you're out in your own shop making projects, making some chips of your own. And until I see you again, keep your tools sharp, keep your mind sharper. Take care.